Coach, obviously, anytime you guys get a sweep, it's a big deal. But doing it, you know, first conference series uh, to do it to Denver, kind of, what does that do for these guys forward? Well, it builds momentum and uh, obviously morale as far as you know how we how we have to play to win games. And uh, yeah, it's uh, you know coming back into Ralph. There's a prideful thing, prideful thing where we. Uh, know we have to be our best because other teams come in here with you know uh, a mentality to try to try to get after us here and I thought you know we did a pretty good job both nights on on getting after it in the first period on on playing the way we have to but kind of setting the tone for how we have to uh, play a 60 minute game with the month that you guys have coming up kind of how, how big was it to start with the sweep like that yeah and, and again uh, you know top ranked team coming in and everybody you know they have their ideas of what, what's probably going to happen on the weekend. But for us, we don't look any more than just playing the Friday night and then taking care of Saturday night uh, after that. And, and uh, you know, winning Friday night was huge. And then coming back to win Saturday night, and we knew there was going to be probably a better effort or a push uh, from them. Uh, but I thought we didn't, I, di I didn't think we allowed them to do that on Saturday. I thought from the first shift on in the first period, we were pretty sharp. Second period, we got into some icing calls and different things where it gave them a little bit of, uh, uh, play in our zone, but you know, just going over the scoring chances. Even though that that we had some icing calls and execution was not as high as it was the first period, we didn't give up a whole lot. You know, they were on the outside a little bit, and then I thought we took over in the third period again. So again, finding ways to to get the, the that momentum back in games when it's not going the right way. But to me, collectively, of of, of winning two games together and play, putting that good effort. Um, is a big deal. And the last thing I'd have to say about that is, you know, I just talked to our guys today before we boarded this plane tomorrow to go to uh, to Oxford is like we, we have to play to our identity of our team. Our identity is that hard skilled hockey that, that we're playing north all the time and we're supporting each other up the ice. And, and, uh, and we, for the last three out of the four games, Saturday in Quinnipiac and then the last two games at home, uh, it's been pretty consistent. The game in the Hall of Fame game, that's not what we want to be, and we got to make sure that we play the way we can these three of the last four games. With the stretch coming up, is there any worry on your end about overlooking uh, Miami? No, you know what? I, again, like have the utmost respect. I think Chris Bergeron has done an outstanding job in a short amount of time there of bringing uh, an identity and a culture that he want to get wants to get get to. Uh, he, he's got a lot of players in there that he's 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 brought in and and he's working with right now and and you saw him go into Omaha on a tough place to play against a very good Omaha team and winning a game on a Friday night so we have we have a lot of respect and we uh, we know that we're going into their building too now so again like I say it's a situation where it doesn't matter who the opponent is we got to make sure that we play to our identity and and uh, make sure that we uh, keep our foot on the gas here. Yeah. They were all yeah. Well, we, you know, we got about four or five games that we're watching right now on them, and uh, you know, I've watched every single one of them, and and uh, I think the one thing that really stands out is is you know they once they get in the offensive zone, they've kind of got that attack mentality below the hash marks. And uh, and even on the power play, you know, they try to flood guys down below uh, the hash marks and get pucks to the net and and just play that hard hockey uh, down there. So we're going to have to defend well. Uh, first of all, we want to make sure that it's going to be tough for them to get into our zone. But once it's in our zone, we got to make sure that we defend well to give us an opportunity to to break pucks out and play in their end of the ring. So uh, I think you know they're starting that mentality with with uh, with a new culture there of trying to trying to be a hard heavy hockey team. Coach availability. Both in, they both practice today. Both in uh, regular colored jerseys. Uh, both went went in every every single drill, and and they uh, they came into practice yesterday, and they got through practice. But the biggest thing is seeing if you can back it up with two practices in a row. And they were they were very good and very sharp today. So they're both uh, on the plane tomorrow. They're both playing Friday. Where's the confidence level with the team coming into last weekend? Now heading out to Miami. Yeah, it, you know what it it. It, it's higher than it was coming back from uh, the Hall of Fame game. And I think coming back from Nashville, you know, our guys were very, very mad at themselves. Us as coaches, too, we're in this together. And we didn't bring our best in, in Nashville. And uh, and that's a pride thing. And, and they came back, and uh, they had a great week of practice last week, knowing we had to work on our habits and details to get to the identity that we need to be. And now that we won a couple of games against Denver, and that's in the rearview mirror because mirror, we're on to Miami now, but it's built momentum that there's a little bit of uh, a confidence as far as how we're 
we're, we're executing with and without the puck. So again, like I said, this group is continuing to grow. We still got a long way to go and we're still building and growing here, but there's good steps forward here with this group and we got to make sure that we continue to take steps forward, not any steps back here. Based on how scheduling shook out last year, so many of your guys have not played at Goggin, both 14 new guys and your sophomores. Just what does leadership say to guys on that when you're, they're going into yeah, you know, there's there's not a lot of familiarity with obviously the due to COVID and not getting in there and and uh, situation of uh, you know a lot of new guys in our lineup. It's it's one of those things where hey, you know, we're going to get it there tomorrow afternoon. We're going to have a have a good practice tomorrow night to get familiarity of the rink, and then it's and then it's game on 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 Friday. So like I said, it's a situation where I, I don't think it's going to matter as far as you know a new place and a new building or whatever, but it is going to matter as far as how we approach the game and how we start the game. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so I think Brady Ferner, you know, he entered the transfer portal. Uh, he was at RPI, he entered the transfer portal. He was a guy down uh, that went back to Sioux City last year. And, uh, you know, he was, he was in their program. And, you know, obviously when we make our rounds on the road and, and talking to coaches and, you know, with Luke Strand and his staff down there, you know, we talked and, you know, asked questions about, you know, some guys that are coming back from college. And, you know, once they got in the portal and, you know, I think it's one of those things where his character uh, uh, led his way into North Dakota, meaning that, you know, when we ask questions about him, the first thing that comes out of people's mouths is unbelievable person, hard worker, team first, um, does anything for the team. And as soon as, uh, you know, those phrases come out of people's mouths that, that, mouths that we uh, trust and respect, then our ears go up and, and we listen a little bit. Then we watch a little bit more. And, you know, it was a situation where, Brad, we lost a ton of guys last year on defense and up front. And, you know, we always want new young players coming in. But I think that was this was this coming this past year was a year we needed to have some experience. And, and we, we dipped in the transfer portal in all positions just to help us with that. But I think the biggest thing that that's a common thread with all those transfers and, and, and even with Brady Ferner is, outstanding person, outstanding character, team first, all the different attributes we want in our culture here at North Dakota. So I think it was mostly just kind of knowing he was on the portal, asking questions, it was word of mouth, watching more, and seeing if there was a fit in our program. And it's been a great fit for him. How, how, what's allowed him to move up the depth chart? I mean, he's definitely getting more ice. Yeah. And, and again, you're never sure when you have, you know, a situation when you when you got a player that you know we brought him in, and you never know how that's going to go out and how fast he gets acclimated to you know what we do. But he hit the ground running, and you know I think we have a couple other younger defensemen that that are uh, that are really good, but they're finding their way as young guys right now. They're going to be really Im I impactful in our group in in the future here. But he gives us uh, somebody in our opportunity that that brings college experience, you know, plays played at a very good institution in a very good league that gives us a little bit of traction early on in a, in a, in a schedule that's been very demanding and tough uh, non-conference and now finally in league play here. Zach, do you have anything on Zoom? Yeah, Coach, I just, you mentioned it earlier that you, you guys were not pleased with the way that Nashville went. Did you feel like guys came back to the rub trying to prove something to themselves that that was – that was more fluke than Yeah, for sure. And it was. And, and I think, you know, just going back to the game, and I'm not going to name names, but guys guys didn't have their best game. And it's not, not that they didn't work hard. It, it's that they probably worked too hard in the fact they did too much. And I think, you know, we gave up that early goal in the game, and we were chasing the game, getting a couple goals down. And then, and then I think guys felt, you know, an obligation in front of a huge packed crowd at, in uh, Nashville that they had to take everything on their back and do it themselves. And that's not how we do things here. And, and uh, you know, we always – we got back to one goal leads, and then we – and then it was a two-goal deficit three different times, and we just kept chasing the game. So. We were disappointed in, in how the game went, and there was pride in the locker room as far as how we need to uh, prepare and make sure that we uh, lead games, not chase games. So as a road test right after what's probably the most complete series of your season so far, kind of what the team needs to just get a challenge and see, okay, can this be made consistent from week to week? Yeah, for sure. And, and again, when I, I just talked about in the in in the scrum is that three of the last four games we played consistently the way we wanted to. The game in Nashville got away from us a little bit. So consistency is a big deal. Getting off to great starts is a big deal, whether you're on the road or at home, and and just playing to our identity and our culture here. Thank you, Coach. Yep.